Hello and welcome to the new rules for negotiating 10 minute learning session, a short but comprehensive series of learning lessons designed to help contract professionals negotiate complex performance and outcome based agreements. This is lesson number five, October 2018 for the year when it has to end terminating an agreement. In this lesson, we are combining best practices for drafting, negotiating, and managing a contract through thinking ahead about how to exit a highly strategic, high-risk agreement. So I am Jeanette Knighton, and I love complex contracts, and I really do. And I was at ProcureCon West in September I'm 2018 in Arizona, and I just have to say I was probably one of the few people uh, who really do love complex contracts. So if you want to know a little bit more about me, visit www.jnyden.com. Okay, is developing an exit management plan part of governance? Absolutely. It is absolutely essential. So for very high strategic, high risk, high value performance and or especially outcome-based contracts, you absolutely have to have an exit management plan as part of your governance structure as you go into the negotiations with the successful counterpart, whether it's a customer or the supplier. I suggest both parties come in with thoughts about what if. What if this has to end through a merger or an acquisition? What if this has to end because of poor performance? What if this has to end because of a major shift in strategic direction as a result of the economy? What if? And we want to think about this in advance as a best practice for these kinds of relationships. So we're talking about managing an exit. And we want a credible exit management plan. That doesn't mean a termination notice is part of a notice of termination section in your general terms. An exit management plan provides the pre-arranged structure for transitioning supplier work either at the end of the contract term, meaning it's a five-year term with two options, both options have been exercised and now the work is going out for a competitive bid and or it's been awarded to another supplier or at the beginning of a new phase of work with another supplier that's a natural part of this work that's being done or back to the customer and when the customer chooses to work with a new supplier for the exact same scope of work. When managing an exit, the goal is to exit the relationship with minimal additional cost and disruption to either party. Now that's critical because I often see things about, well, not wanting to incur any additional cost for the customer, but it can be very harmful to the supplier to incur a lot of additional costs that are unclear as part of this, the original scope of work that cannot be uh, amended through a scope change process and I have certainly seen outstanding invoices of a million dollars as a result of trying to unwind a relationship and move from one supplier to another without any real clear indication that the buying organization was going to pay the supplying organization for work the supplying organization believed it was doing in furtherance of requests by the customer. So we really want to make sure that both parties come out whole. It is wise for organizations to have the plan developed at the beginning of the relationship. And this is for all highly strategic relationships that both suppliers and customers have in place. And one of the potential dangers with highly strategic relationships is that organizations can become so entwined with and dependent on one another that the organizations accept poor performance rather than work with a new organization. And again, I just have to say this goes both ways, right? I've seen customers become somewhat frustrated and helpless and thinking that they could not e amend a relationship to get the performance it wanted. A uh, relationship that I worked on with T-Mobile some years ago really changed that collaborative dynamic. 
but I've also been the one to deliver the news that the supplier was not going to submit a proposal with a solicitation for work, meaning it was pulling itself out of consideration to work with that customer because it had accepted poor performance on the customer side for so long that it cost it the supplier money to work with the customer. That's not a good situation. And it actually backed that customer, an electronics company here in the United States, into quite a corner. Termination clauses are not the answer. I'm a lawyer. I write clauses. I love clauses. I love contracts. I love everything about negotiating, drafting, and managing contracts. And these clauses are woefully inadequate. So either a clause for convenience or cause or cancellation or breach often include a notice to the supplier, but they don't set forth the structure to unwind the business relationship. And that's what we need in a highly strategic relationship. In fact, it's my opinion and those of my colleagues that these termination clauses may provide incentives for the supplier to dump and run, stripping resources from the project long before the work is transitioned to the customer or to another supplier. And in these cases, services may be seriously disrupted and end users or customers negatively impacted and costs significantly increased. So your termination clauses are a legal point to determined to trigger the legal portion of the exit, but it is not the business portion of the exit. I'm talking about the business portion of the exit. So there are four elements of the exit management plan. There's the termination notice, there's the exit transition period, the exit transition plan itself, and the exit governance and reporting plans. So there are four elements to exit. So we want to tell them when we plan to exit and 60 or 90 days is just not going to work for a lot of highly strategic relationships. What that period looks like and what we and number third, what we want to have happen during that period, and then how do we govern the exit and how do we report on the exit to make sure that all bases are in fact covered. If the parties developed a transition plan at the beginning of the contract, the exit management plan will provide a reverse snapshot of that initial implementation plan. So for those of you who haven't taken a look at the August learning lesson, please, if you are currently subscribe to get them. Go look at the August lesson because that was your transition plan. And the exit plan ought to be specific about the roles, duties, and expectations of both parties. And that's why if you have a, a transition into the relationship plan, that can provide a snapshot that we can then reverse to back out of the relationship. And I've done that before, is use the implementation outline going forward, reverse it and add a lot more about reports and transitioning, documentation, confidential information being destroyed, knowledge being transferred, but then reverse it and bring it back into the customer in the event of the end of a relationship. All right, so this information is based on the Contract Professionals Playbook. I just have to say I'm incredibly proud of this playbook and e-learning program, which is a web-based, self-paced, how do I learning program. There are 12 how do I questions to enhance commercial competencies for performance and outcome-based contracts. Um, I have videos, I have case studies, I have tools, I have more than 25 tools and a live Q&A session. And this program is perfect for one person or a team. So along with this video, you're gonna get a sample tool for an exit management plan, just to give you an idea of what the Contract Professionals Playbook is all about. If you wanna learn more, visit my website, www.j9.com, or email me at jn at, jn, <laughs> jn at j9.com. Why is that a tongue twister for me? All right, so thank you very much and I look forward to talking to you soon.